Hello, St. Louis, and welcome to the STL Leaders Podcast, hosted by Brian Bisking. Brian started this weekly podcast to give a voice to leaders of our community, to share their story, their journey, and the lessons that they have learned along the way. Brian grew up in a small town outside of St. Louis, where he watched his father run a small business and was always interested in how the leaders in his community got where they are. Whether it's a local business leader, a philanthropist, or a celebrity, these are your STL leaders. Join us today, where we will chat with another pillar of our community on this week's episode of the STL Leaders Podcast. And now, your host, Brian Bisking. Hello, St. Louis, and welcome to this week's episode of the STL Leaders Podcast. On this week's episode, we welcome John Nicely to the show. But before we get to this week's episode, I want to thank my sponsors. First, NWO IT Services, Synchrony HR, Go Brand Go, Edward Jones, Enterprise Bank and Trust, and the Tom James Company. And now to this week's episode with John Nicely. John, nicely welcome to the STL Leaders Podcast. Appreciate you coming on today. Yeah, thanks, Brian. I am thrilled to be here. You've uh, had a, a quite a list of guests to this point, so I'm honored to be included on this great podcast you got going. Absolutely. Well, we got introduced uh, during COVID about a year ago, I guess it's been, and then ran into each other at the uh, ACG golf outing um, here a couple months ago. Had a great time out there that day, and so wanted to get you on the podcast. I think you got a really cool story, and and especially what you're doing now here in St. Louis, I'd like to share that with the audience today. So I guess let's start there. Let's start about kind of yep. growing up and what led you back to St. Louis to start Vitalux Agency. Yeah, I appreciate it. You know, right now it's fun telling this story because my roots begin in St. Louis. My first three years uh, in the early 80s, my father, John Nicely as well, was the sports director on Channel 2 uh, here at, at um it was ABC at the time before, and now it's Channel 2 is Fox. But he worked alongside Larry Connors as the sports director for a few years. We ended up moving to Omaha, Nebraska. Zipper Zeppa, who, of course, everyone in St. Louis knows, took over for my dad. So uh, that's been a fun relationship I've built with Zip uh, since I've been back. We've gotten together a few times. So St. Louis uh, raised in my early years, then to Omaha, Nebraska, where my father is still a news anchor on, on TV. And that's where my main childhood was, but not having a major league baseball team there, the Cardinals uh, have been my team for life. So <laughs> it's been, it's, it's fun being back in St. Louis. And I followed in my dad's footsteps into broadcast TV and bounced around all over the country. And fortunately got to the opportunity to work here in St. Louis at channel four. So I was the morning news anchor on KMOV channel four 2009 to 2011 alongside Virginia Kerr and Claire Kellett. And then I did evening news for a year, the 5 p.m. alongside Jasmine Huda, who uh, these are names that, of course, everyone in St. Louis knows. So these were my colleagues. And then the opportunity came to, to move to Seattle and become the morning anchor out there. Um, but more importantly, in 2011, right after the Cardinals won the World Series, which I got to cover, of course, uh, for KMOV, I met my wife. And she's a St. Louis girl, born and raised. So we've got the, the St. Louis blood in us. We went out to Seattle, did news for a few years. And I knew I wanted out of TV into business, looking for my path and, and how do I get into the business world. And uh, the doors opened to that while I was in Seattle. I was talking with a alumni group member about my path into business, the value I can bring, and talked about my love for storytelling. And he said, well, we have a storytelling team at Microsoft, which is independent of marketing, independent of PR, independent of communications. They just find and tell authentic stories, true stories that highlight the Microsoft brand. And I thought, wow, that's something I want to do. So I got to meet the chief storyteller, a guy named Steve Clayton. He's got a TED Talk you could look up and learn the value that I can bring. But a friend who's an entrepreneur said, you know, John, you could go work for a big company like Microsoft or 
Boeing perhaps, that have a storytelling team, but most companies don't. So you could do this as a third party and work for a lot of companies. And that got my entrepreneurial wheels spinning and started VLUX Agency, which is Latin for life and light. We bring life and light to your brand through authentic stories. That's awesome. That's really cool. So talk to me before we dive into the agency, talk to me a little about being a news anchor. Uh, what is that like? You know, I obviously all of us, uh, I'll say normal people, quote unquote, normal people, right? We watch you guys on TV every morning and, and, sure. uh, or in the evening. What's that like? I mean, do you, when you're out in public eye, do people recognize you? People come up to you kind of like people would a, a Cardinals player. You know, it's, it's funny. Sometimes I, I was always really surprised when somebody, uh, would recognize me. Um, but, I grew up around that environment too. My dad, you know, has been the Mike Bush of Omaha of sorts where everyone knows him. He can't go anywhere without being recognized. So I would say my dad lived that life and still does more on the recognizable side. Uh, it got to that point to an extent for me, you know, being a news anchor is a lot of fun. You get to cover a wide variety of topics that are important to your community yeah. and your, your fingers kind of on the pulse of that. And so you're really, you need to be, and you are well informed on the real important things that are going on, the good, the bad, the ugly. So it, it can be heavy at times, of course, because there's a lot of uh, tough stuff that you have to cover in the news. Yeah. But then again, you, you have the days of I'm on stage at the winter warm up interviewing Chris Carpenter and like pinching myself. Is this real? And, or especially when I got to interview Ozzy Smith, because he was my childhood sports hero. Sure. And he came, came into the studio at news four and, I get to interview him one-on-one. -on -one. I couldn't believe it. And I, I brought a baseball, he autographed it. So, and that's a Jersey. Cool. So. Yeah, that's cool. So let me ask <laughs> yeah. you this one about being a news anchor. I'm sure there's, I mean, from a story perspective, obviously you get to do stories that you agree with and uh, stories that you may not agree with. How do you, you know, there's, and, and I don't want to turn this political, so let's not do that. But, you know, from <laughs> sure. a, you know, when we think about the news media today, how as a, as an anchor of a, you know, a local station like News 4, right, you're just mm -hmm. trying to, to inform the audience of, of the story? How, how do you try exactly. to stay center so that you're not leaning one way or the other? Or do you feel like that maybe that is a problem with our country today? Well, it's, it's a good question. Uh, the reality is we all have inner biases that are hard to completely squash because we're yeah. humans. Sure. But as a journalist, period, your job is to uncover the facts of a story and tell it. And then the audience can decide for themselves. So really, you just have to approach each story, whether you personally like what's going on in politics or you dislike it, you should. And I think most of the broadcasters that I've worked with over the years, especially on the local level, do a great job of that. I'm just, yeah, yeah you know, I agree. I, telling I, the story. Yeah, from a local level, I feel like they do a pretty good job with it. I, I think obviously you get to the national news and it's oh, yeah. it's very yeah. biased one way or the other. But um, very. Yeah, 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 I can't even watch that stuff anymore. Yeah. At all. yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about the agency because I'm really intrigued what you're doing here in St. Louis. Um, we talked yeah. uh, at the ACG uh, golf outing about, you know, you're you're uh, doing some storytelling for even some past guests that have been on this podcast. So mm -hmm. talk to us about the agency, what you guys are doing and, and how you're helping companies tell their story. Yeah, I appreciate it. So really the, the value that we bring is helping you get crystal clear on who you need to reach. What does that target audience, ideal target client, what do they look like? And we help you really create that profile and get in their world. And then we reverse engineer the authentic story connected to your brand that's going to resonate with that ideal target audience. And that way, when that message is told, whether it's just verbally through an elevator pitch or through high-end video production, which we do, that, that person you're trying to reach can put themselves into your story. So it's not us as a brand bragging that we can do X, Y, and Z, and we have this product that can has all these features. You know, the companies, if you think about it, that do it the best are Apple, Subaru, like watch a Subaru commercial yeah. and it, they just tell a story. And, and it's inviting that next person into the Subaru story. They're not bragging that their vehicle has this feature and that feature and whatnot. So it's, it's utilizing what's authentic about your brand and how it resonates best with the people you're trying to reach. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's really cool. And I think what, I mean, to your point, um, you know, most small businesses or medium sized businesses, however you want to classify them here in St. Louis, probably don't have a full time storytelling team. And to be able to use somebody like you who has the knowledge of, 
of your career to be able to help them tell that story. And however you're telling them that story, like you said, whether it's a video or, or just in an elevator pitch, um, I think it's definitely needed in the, in the small to medium sized space and uh, can do it with an agency like yourselves instead of having to have a full team that can you know, manage that. Yeah, I appreciate that. And, and really it's, it's complimentary to whatever marketing efforts a team already has. It's not in place of, right. it's working with, and, and as a client of mine needs different aspects as far as digital marketing goes, I bring in the right strategic partners because my main proposition again is this clarity of messaging. Who do we need to reach with the right story? And yeah. it, it can work with any size company they, they might have more resources than another company, but it just customized to each, each company's needs. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm sure you've told some cool stories in your past, uh, whether it's about a company or you, maybe there's a story when you stuck out as a news anchor, is there one that like, if you look back either, whether it's with the agency or even previously that, that kind of stands out that you're like, wow, that was a fun story to tell. Yeah. A few come to mind, if I may. And one was my first year as a news reporter out of Paducah, Kentucky. I got to travel with three busloads of World War II veterans to Washington, D.C. to visit the new World War II memorial and telling their stories, incorporating their war stories into the story of the trip uh, was amazing. And I just have the, the most respect for that generation. So that was awesome. You know, on a personal level, Growing up as a Cardinals fan and getting to cover the 2011 World Series, I, I still can't believe it that I got yeah. to do that. So that's awesome. Then on the business side, this you alluded to some of the guests you've had on this podcast. Landon Hobson is the CEO of Cosmos Corporation. They do pet products, pet shampoo, but their story is incredible. Started 40 years ago from Don Kassebaum Sr., he was a barber, started selling human beauty supplies. The four sons joined the business. They started selling pet shampoo and and now they've grown to this uh, huge success in north america and growing globally so what i'm doing for them is a long form story a documentary type story that shares the the years and i was just working with my editor on this today they used to sleep in their cars on sales trips and i'm not talking once or twice for years the casabon brothers would sleep in their vehicles as they drove across the country selling pet products to uh, to, to these different pet companies and uh, groomers and such. So telling those stories, the hardships that led them to where they are today, highly successful and in, in a great, uh, you know, great company, but it was a grind and it's yeah. the, the good, the bad and the ugly. That's part of this story that they're sharing with me that we'll, we'll then share in this documentary. Yeah, absolutely. We've had Landon Opson on this, uh, this podcast, a great, great CEO, great STL leader, uh, I, I joked with him when I had him on here. I'm actually going out to do a tour of their uh, facility here in a couple of weeks, but that I, you know, I used to use their pet shampoo and had no clue that it was, uh, <laughs> that it was literally manufactured in my backyard of right. O'Fallon, Missouri. Uh, so really cool story. And if you haven't listened yeah. to Landon Hobson's episode, I, I definitely tell you to go check it out here on the STL leaders podcast. Yeah. They, they talk about leadership and, and company culture. I just haven't seen anything like it. And, and to that point, my documentary team, we just spent a day out there with their employees and my team was saying to me, they're like, man, something's different about this company. They, they claim these values and they live it. And you can just, yeah. you can just feel it and taste it as you're, as you're there. So you'll have a great visit when you go check it out. Yeah. I'm excited to get out there. Well, I'm a, I always kind of ask my guests on this podcast about COVID. Um, I know you kind of mm. moved back to the St. Louis area and kind of, I mean, you're getting your agency kind of off the ground um, <laughs> when COVID like hit the, hit the fan. Right. Talk to us about how you were able to navigate that and how did it impact your, your, your business? Yeah, so my business officially formed the corporation on February 14th of 2020. So great timing there, right? Um, <laughs> so, so COVID hits, we were, we were still in Seattle at the time and I had two clients lined up or two that uh, would have been big for me projects at the moment and they both just got slam shut just to, you know to no fault of anyone's is just they that's just what happened right so many people have that story so what i started doing is working with some local videographers high-end video professionals and doing a documentary on covid19 through the lens of the restaurant industry but in the meantime the you know that doesn't pay the bills and so my wife was looking to get back to work and applying for jobs in st louis and in seattle we were would have loved to get back to st louis and had the opportunity she works for boeing now 
and uh, got a great opportunity with Boeing that brought us back. But for me and my business, you know, I'm moving back with a few connections in TV and that's about it. So a mentor of mine from Seattle connected me to Ryan Bretch with Spoke Marketing, who uh, they previously knew each other. Ryan introduced me immediately to Jennifer Bardot, another uh, guest of yours on this podcast. Yep. And if anyone knows Jennifer, she's the person to know, right? So yep. Jennifer introduced me to a number of people, including Amy Rubesom with ACG St. Louis. And ACG became a client of mine and a great network for me to build my business. That's how I let, met Landon Hobson. And so it, the story, it, it's been a grind not so different from most entrepreneurs, but it's, uh, it's been fun networking, you know, networking via zoom. I had my doubts if it'd be doable, but I met you via zoom right during a yep. call about a year ago. So I'm just grateful for all the people in St. Louis who have given me that opportunity to just get to know them and share my story. Yeah. What I love about that is I, we talk about networking on this podcast all the time. I'm obviously a firm believer of networking. That's how this podcast even got started. Um, I was one of those individuals that Jennifer Bardot introduced uh, you to. And uh, Jennifer, to your point, yeah, she's been on the podcast. She's, uh, well, Enterprise Bank and Trust, who she works for, is our main sponsor of this podcast. Um, if, without them, this podcast wouldn't be possible, to be honest with you. And that's all because of Jennifer. So a great, she's a great STL leader. And I, I love how the connection to Ryan, who I also know, to Jennifer, and then, you know, kind of helps you get off the ground and then just goes to prove what networking can do if you do it the right way um, and meet mm -hmm. great people. Yeah, and I'll plug this. Jennifer and I are in the works of building a new talk show that's going to be focusing on highlighting the untold stories of innovation and startup stories in the community in St. Louis. So we're working with I-10 We've got, uh, we've shot a pilot episode. Uh, so you, you can look for that in the, in the months to come, but it's, it's uh, going to be a fun project. It's not going to compete with STL leaders. Don't worry. <laughs> it's, it's, it's complimentary. 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 There we go. There we yeah. go. Yeah. And now for a quick break, we bring in our sponsor, Enterprise Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Enterprise Bank and Trust knows that every business and every person is unique. That's why they get to know you in a way that the large financial institutions don't. They are our banking partner here at the STL Leaders, and I highly recommend that you check them out. To learn more, visit enterprisebank.com. And now, back to this week's episode of the STL Leaders Podcast. Let's shift gears here a little bit, and let's talk a little bit about leadership. So talk to me a little bit about your views on leadership and, and how you lead, obviously being a news anchor for a while and now running your own business. Kind of talk to me about your views on leadership. Sure. I, I can tell you it's an ever evolving process and, and the more experience I get and the more exposure I have to great leaders, the more I realize how much I uh, have needed to improve over the years. So as, as a news anchor, you're kind of like the quarterback of a team where you're not the coach, the executive producer or news director is the coach, but you're, you're the quarterback. You're kind of calling plays, your hands on every, every story that's, that's going on. So I can look back to my days at News 4 and really realize elements of poor leadership I had. The, my view previously was, if my commitment is to excellence, that's going to be enough as a leader. Uh, my commitments to excellence, do great work and be solid, and then everyone else needs to do the same. And that's just not true. That's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the commitment to excellence, but being a true leader is about so much more than that. Yeah. And so I've, I've learned from some great leaders over time on, on how to uh, not just lead by example, but lead through communication, feedback, learning to give feedback, receive feedback, and not take things personal, but also deliver tough feedback in a proper way when it's needed. Yeah, no, absolutely. Great, great of you, I would say. You know, I've got to imagine, though, as you talk to so many companies and telling their stories, you meet some awesome leaders as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you've seen, you mentioned, uh, you know, Cosmos Corps and their company culture. But from your viewpoint, how important is it for a company when, to be successful to have solid leadership and company culture all in one? I think it's hugely important, you know, there to, to have lasting sustainable success. I think it's just imperative. And again, 
I'm getting into the business world in these last few years. And so I'm, I'm, I've had the pleasure to get exposed to companies like Cosmos and other groups that do it really well and, and see how it's done. So I, everything that I can see from what I've learned, uh, it's just hugely important. And yeah. it, for example, even just to use Cosmos again, I was just at a, a charity event for their foundation, Gifts of Love, which uh, has orphanages in Guatemala and Haiti. But I was talking with this employee who I've had a few conversations with, and he said that he took a $20,000 pay cut to go to Cosmos just because of his personal belief in what they're doing and the culture and how much happier he is there. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not a spokesperson for Cosmos. I'm not getting paid for that. You know, I'm doing a project for them. So I, I'm not trying to uh, push that too much, but it's just, uh, it's just real. It's authentic. And it is. And that's, that's how you retain people and, and attract the right people as well. Yeah. There's another company here in St. Louis called Cambridge Air Solutions. It used to be called Cambridge Engineering. We've had Mark Braun, who is the past president of Cambridge on this podcast. And they're got a very, very similar uh, makeup and feel and philosophy when it comes to business and leadership and company culture here in St. Louis. Another fantastic company to check out. Um, yeah. You can also listen to you know Mark Braun kind of talk about that. He was the president for 13 years at Cambridge before he stepped down to kind of get into some consulting. Um, that was episode 63 of the STLers podcast. I would, I would suggest you check those, that episode out as well. Awesome. Love it. Yeah, absolutely. So let me ask yeah. you this. Where did you learn to be a great leader? Did you, did you learn from your father? Yeah, I would say so. My, my father for sure. Cause he's, he's a leader in his, his newsroom. I remember going to the, the TV station as a kid and he would do things, little things like he would buy ice cream bars for the whole studio team on a regular basis, just cause, you know, just, just being a, a servant leader, I've seen him do that. And then a community leader for sure, where he's, uh, you know, recognized and, and lives it. It's not just, uh, it's not just a persona. It's, it's how he lives. So credit my father for sure. My grandfather was an entrepreneur and I saw him, how he led the companies that, that he ran as well. So I've had some great family examples to, to follow and really big shoes to fill. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I got to imagine when you took kind of the shift from, you know, journalist, news anchor to entrepreneur and business world, there's been some books or some podcasts or audio books that you've listened to, to kind of help shape not only your views on the business world, but leadership. Is there mm -hmm. any that stick out to you? Yeah. It, as far as leadership goes, it's the book Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willink. Yeah. Former Navy SEAL and him and uh, Leif Babin, I believe, is his, his partner and, and co-author. And, and what Extreme Ownership talks about is whether you're looking at the people who you lead or the people you answer to, taking ownership for every aspect of those situations. So you're unhappy with your boss and how communication is going. What can you do on your end to improve that situation? And it's so easy to not go there and to point fingers and blame. And that's what we, all of us, I think, as a human knee-jerk reaction, we want to do. Yeah. But learning to take extreme ownership, and, and I've, I've learned that too through Cujo Teshner, who's a, a St. Louis guy, and he has My, his book out, Debrief to Win. Yeah, he was the first episode I ever did. Oh, okay, awesome. I thought you were connected with him. I didn't realize that. That's all. Yeah, he and I have been getting together, and, and what he's leading companies through in that same mindset of accountability is just awesome. And it's, yeah. it, you know, accountability, we typically think of almost as like a, a, a harsh word, a bad word. And he, he shows you and teaches you how it's not, how it's, yeah. it's a great, great thing. Yeah. Kudo is a great guy, extreme ownership, great book. I actually previous company that I worked for had um, them come to a sales convention that we were a part of mm -hmm. and, and did a speech and uh, yeah, great book, great people. And um, also hats off to Cujo. I mean, talk about a great leader. Um, his story is remarkable. If you, if you don't know his story, I would tell you not to go back and listen to that episode. It was my first <laughs> episode, which was very, very <laughs> terrible. Um, but you know, I didn't know what I was doing at that particular point. I, I've always joked with Cujo. I need to bring you back on so we can do one the right way. Um, <laughs> right. But a great guy. And if I would suggest you find him on LinkedIn and, and reach out to him as well. But um, great, great books for sure. Yeah. Debrief to Win is, is the name of his book that's out there too. If anyone wants to check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, John, I always end my podcast by asking my guests to leave us with a piece of advice. So whether that's on business or life in general, what's something you could leave us with today? Yeah, I would say 
loving people and looking to add value. These are principles that I have seen people uh, display and I learned that, okay, getting into business, you need to add value, more value than you're taking and you need to just build great relationships. So the idea that you know, relationships lead to business. That's not an earth shattering concept by any means, but being an entrepreneur, it's challenging, right? Because I need income, <laughs> you know, yep. relationships don't pay the bills <laughs> just because they're a relationship. So it, it's, it's taken me, it's, it's a, still an ongoing process that I'm learning. You no, know, the, the real value is in the relationship and it's going to lead to the right opportunities, whether it's with that person or they're going to connect you to the right person to where you can add value. So it's, uh, it, it's something that I continue to learn and, and see it in real time. And to that point, there's a, a great book called The Go-Giver, which I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with. And I recently read that book and it just highlights those principles. And, and, and if I can, Brian, to that point, my relationship with Amy Rubesome and ACG St. Louis getting connected to them was my first Zoom call. Amy had a, a challenge with uh, some editing she needed done for a, a little project. I was like, hey, I can do that for you. And I, I just did it. Well, that led to a lot of business I've done for ACG. So I'm really grateful for that opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I also got to note that you were, <clears throat> excuse me, a Baylor alumni. Uh, we chatted mm, about this yes. at, at ACG and, and uh, my daughter is actually named after Baylor University. We, we talked about that, but uh, you, us Baylor people got to stick together, right? <laughs> hey. I love it. I love that you brought that up. You told me that you named your daughter Baylor after the university and I'm a proud alum. Yeah. Once, once COVID settles down, we're going to be getting the Baylor alumni group going here for sure. We've got a, a great football team right now, ranked number 20. And yeah. as of recording this episode and then our basketball team coming off the national championship, which is still in pleasant disbelief about that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, John, on behalf of myself and the STL leaders podcast, I appreciate you being a great STL leader appreciate what you're doing to tell the, the stories of our community and, and the stories of so many great businesses like Cosmos Corps here in St. Louis. Uh, thank you for doing, for doing what you're doing. And I appreciate you coming on today. Appreciate it, Brian. Keep up the great work.